Today we're checking out dog bite scenes for movies and breaking down what's actually going on when you cut out the fancy editing, the scary music, and seeing what these dogs actually are doing. Let's get started. Oh, no, that's a big dog. <laughs> a Rothweiler? See a big square head. Oh, he's happy. <laughs> As a happy boy running towards her. It's so funny there. They're editing in all the growling and the sounds. But if you first look when the dog comes running out, you can see the tail being nice and relaxed. The dog's kind of bounding, happily running. Happy dog. Look at how happy he is bouncing up and forth. Let me get over this fence. You can actually see the way the dog barks there. Unless you've watched thousands and thousands of dogs barking, it's easy to miss. But the way that dog was barking there at the top of the fence was a happy bark. That was a bark of, come on, let's go play, let's go play. Even though they're trying to make it seem scary, actually in dog world, that was a happy bark. Let's see if she can outrun the Rothweiler. The happiest Rothweiler I ever seen <laughs> coming towards her. See again, <laughs> just a happy run, grabbing the backpack. Oh, they got away? He grabbed the backpack there, somehow she magically got it off, but Rottweilers actually have a very, very, very powerful jaw. One of the strongest bite forces of any dog, in fact. Trying to forcibly open up a Rottweiler's mouth, you'll never do it. She got in the car, at least. He says, I want to come in. Let me go for her ride. <laughs> Again, that happy bark. He's gnawing at the window. Is she going to get it up in time? That's <laughs> such a happy boy. I know, I know. It looks so terrifying. It looks so scary, again, to the untrained eye. Look at this section a little bit in slow motion. Looking at the face there, the face is relaxed, the jowls are relaxed. You can almost see the dog is actually smiling. This, in this scene, this dog in real life actually was so happy having so much fun. Oh, don't decapitate him. Be safe. He's gonna find a way in, surely, right? What's he gonna do? Come through the windshield? Rottweilers also are such a smart breed of dog. They will outthink you. What's the plan here? No, not sneak out the trunk. Dog would know in a, in a second if you go out the back. The second you open the latch, the dog would hear that. Maybe that's not where she's not what she's thinking. What would you do in this scenario? If you're actually stuck in a car, you can't start it. I don't know what I would do. I guess you just wait it out, honestly. Eventually the dog would get bored and would leave. What is this belt loop for though? Oh, she is opening the trunk, so I thought. Okay, I was right. The second you do that though, dog hears it. He's gonna be back there. Oh no, she can decapitate him when he goes in? Oh no! Oh, he's not falling for it. He's too smart. I told you Rottweilers were smart! Maybe he will fall for it, though. Let's see. Oh, you were too slow. Oh, pulls up that part. Okay, okay. Not bad. I guess I was going a little bit dark there. I was thinking when the dog goes to go in, she's going to try to time to pull down the thing, chop off the dog's head. Uh, that's not where it was going. Luckily, good. Dog still gets to live. Okay, good, good, good. I don't know if that would actually hold a real dog, though. That's like, yeah. Rottweilers are such a powerful breed of dog. It doesn't surprise me they could just bust right through that. They are all muscle. <laughs> That's a happy boy. Look at that smile. Again, I know it looks scary, but when you look at the dog in slow motion here, you can see with the tongue hanging out, the face is so relaxed, and the way the eyes are, that is such a happy dog. He was having so much fun doing this. Again? Oh god. It's a perfectly normal and natural response for dogs to want to be protective and guard their own property. If this was a real life scenario, it'd be very easy to go, oh my god, that dog is aggressive and dangerous. But the reality is it would be human error. We're going into the dog's territory. In the dog's mind, it's their right to protect their place of living. How many times do I have to tell you to keep your dog off my property? He wasn't on your property. You tell those two girls to stay on your side of the fence. I That's swear right. To God, if you don't put your dog down, I'm going to do it for you. 99% of the time when there's a dog bite, it is not actually the dog's fault. It is human error. Humans, especially when it comes to children, have done something that has caused the dog to bite that could have been prevented completely. This is a perfect example. A child sticking their arm through a fence where there's a dog that they don't know and the dog bites. Guess what? Dog's right to bite. Are you kidding me? Her entire arm looks like a dental mold and you're telling me that there's nothing that we can do. She said he was provoked. 
provoked? Yes. Have you seen this dog? It is a monster. I'm chasing it off of my property every other day. I'm no legal expert, but I believe that when it comes to dog bites, regardless of whether the dog was actually provoked, it doesn't matter. Your dog can still be potentially euthanized or taken away if they bite, even if they are provoked. So it's really important that even though, yes, people do stupid things and make bad choices and provoke our own dogs. If you're a dog owner, it's our job to be even more vigilant that we try to prevent our dog from being in that situation, especially when we know there's people around. German Shepherd coming on the leash. Says, who are you in my yard? Whenever a dog is in their own yard, naturally they're gonna be protected, especially if it's a protective type of breed. Shepherds, Rottweilers, Dobermans, they have a genetic predisposition to want to guard. On top of that, anytime a dog is actually tied to something, you're much more likely to see an aggressive response. So you always gotta be careful. Honestly, I wouldn't even approach dogs that are tethered up unless the owner's there and you know for sure that dog is safe. That, that pole is looking a little weak. I have a feeling that thing's gonna go out. Yeah. Okay, you probably should have just run. Don't be going slow motion to the dog. Dog can probably clear that fence. German Shepherds are quite athletic. Did he get him? Oh, he got him. Right by the leg. Now, this looks, again, dangerous. And like, oh my god, this dog is actually attacking. And with pro the way they probably did this is... The guy has bite um, pads under his leg, under his arm, all those places he was biting. The dog was actually biting there. But in the dog's mind, again, it was fun. It was a game. It, it was a type of tug of war, if you will. I still see ya. Is he gonna hop the fence? He could clear that. Oh, maybe he's got a secret entrance on the other side. Well, we're just going through straight through the door. Tackling him. Yeah, see, right there, he's going for the bite, the arm. He's got to have a bite sleeve on underneath there. Good. <laughs> you better neuter that mutt. <laughs> if you hear that you should neuter a dog and that's going to make them less aggressive, that's not true. There's no correlation between aggression and a dog being neutered or being attacked. What happens is when you neuter a dog, you take away that testosterone. So the dog's energy level goes down. But the actual underlying reasons for aggression, if your dog has something, it's not going to just go away because you neuter him. Cujo. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, <laughs> the big St. Bernard. They got him all covered with dirt and blood. I remember as a kid seeing this, and it scared the hell out of me. And then as an adult, and especially once I started learning about dog behavior and everything, now I look at it and I just laugh. Where is he? <laughs> oh, there's Cujo. Oh. Whenever dogs are going to bite, there's always warning signs. One of the biggest warning signs is what Cujo just did there, showing the teeth. Whenever you see a dog burying their teeth, it's the dog's way of communicating, hey, whatever you're doing, you better get away or stop. And if you don't, you're going to get bit. He's charging. Oh, no. Cujo's attacking. Now, we look at this, right? And we go, oh, my God, especially back then. This is so scary. The scary music. She's screaming. We got the big blood all over this big beautiful dog but the reality there is what was happening is the dog was just trying to play they were doing something to get the dog to jump on her and the dog just thinks he's having fun they're roughhousing basically in the dog's mind all right then we got to get into the car teach Cujo to jump up on the up on the door into the car again <laughs> movie wise it looks like oh my god the dog is mauling her so when Cujo jumps in the car there, still, it's just play. Those scary shots where, you know, you see Cujo actually barking and trying to bite, they've done something to make the dog bark. They probably put the camera down. They did something to kind of probably tease the dog below. They were teasing him with a toy, teasing him with food, something to get the dog to bark. Man, she's going for the thermos, she's whacking him on the head. That's not gonna work on Cujo though. What is he biting there? Was it her leg they were trying to make it seem like? Now that's an easy, easy thing to fake there. You teach the dog to bite the bite, bite the clothes, right? Again in the movie, oh my god, dog's ripping her clothes off. In the dog's brain, oh my god, I'm playing tug of war. 
who just said, let me back in. I'm not done playing. Now, in reality, if you ever are actually attacked by a dog, trying to fight back, I mean, it can go both ways. The 50-50 shot. The best thing to do, though, really, is just to try to ball up and keep, protect yourself. Cover your ears, right? Because easy thing for dogs to bite and rip off. Make yourself into a tight ball like this. Tuck your legs up and try to just protect your throat, any vital area. Oftentimes, dogs will that are actually trying to attack will end up getting bored and they'll leave you alone. Try to fight back. Maybe it's better with smaller dogs because, you know, we can overpower them. But when it comes to a big, large, powerful dog, if you ever are attacked, the best thing is kind of just play defensive. Now, obviously, all of these dogs that were in these movies, they're real dogs. The power of editing, though, adding in sounds, though just the way things are shot. It's really interesting that how aggressive they can actually make these dogs look when in reality, almost every single one of those scenes where the dog was biting or chasing or doing something in the dog's mind, it was just play. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you get notifications when the new videos go live. If you ever need a little extra help training your dog, check out my website, brightdog.com. See you next time.